I'm Ryan. And I'm Shay. And welcome to Top 5 Beatdown, a show where we compare top fives for topics that seem completely asinine, yet somehow garner strong opinions. And to add some fun to the mix, we compare our top fives to that of a special guest. Today's topic is Top 5 Food Mascots. And today's special guest is a YouTube guy and other things. Please welcome to the Beat Zone, Jarvis Johnson. Hello. Oh. Oh. Let's hear it. Yeah. How's it going? Now, what is your guys' relationship with food mascots? Mm, good question. Mm. <laughs> Most of the food I eat doesn't have a mascot. Okay. So I feel like there's a lot of mascots that I just have a relationship with through media. Mm. Mm. A lot of that is in childhood, too. A lot of it's set in childhood. Yeah. So you might be hitting us with some deep cuts, then. At least one deep cut. I like to think about a person when I eat a food. Um, what now? Mascots. It's nice to think about someone who's well, I know. telling you. Just, just deconstructing the Someone sentence who's telling you, you enjoy this. It's okay. Trust me. You'll enjoy right. this. A toast. You know how come toast doesn't have a guy who's like, don't forget to put it in the toaster. Otherwise, it's just bread. You know, I want a, a person telling me about the food I'm eating. Without further ado, let's get into the rules of today's listing. It has to be food or drink related mascots. No identifiable living human mascot allowed, and side characters are allowed. Let's, let's list. list. That's pretty good. That was really good. One of the best we've ever done. I think we're all ready to go. Without yep. further ado, shall we load our lists up on our lap? <laughs> And let's start with our number five, starting with you, Jarvis. So I did allude to a deep cut. Uh -huh. And so my number five is going to harken back to my time living in San Francisco. Mm. So my number five is the Casa Sanchez, Sanchez Corn Man. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> he's got a little scar. Oh man, he and looks- And he's got a corn rocket. He's got a corn rocket and there's magic floating around him. I was thrown off by man. This is much it more Casa, like a little boy. Casa Sanchez corn boy. This looks like Speedy. Oh, corn boy. Yeah, because he doesn't look like a man. It looks yeah, like what Speedy does he Gonzalez. Need to be a man. Look at him. Is he like a mustache? I need like a big burly. A he looks small. And, and first look at him. That's true. He is a small bee. He's a little. Good. He's and a he's got small. little funny small. Feet. Look at the way he's absolutely gripping the kernels. Yeah. The corn. He's like he's like holding on for dear life. Yeah, when a roller coaster like speeds up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really white knuckling it there. So there is a mural in the mission in San Francisco of this man, real big. That's and awesome. I used to walk by it all the time. But until that moment, I never paid attention to the logo on the bag because it's one of those transparent bags of tortilla chips yeah. that's got the little sticker label on it. Yeah. But then I became acquainted with the corn man and he changed my life. So, there's so many times you see something in corn your boy, life. Sorry. Corn boy, sorry. Corn boy, he's corn boy. Yeah. You see something in your life every day and you don't value it. And right. then you look at it with new eyes. And exactly. Like, that's really something. Is the idea here that he's riding a corn rocket into your mouth? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Okay. You know what I like? This was a deep cut, but it's I appreciate cut. it. Yeah, I like it's it. a good Thank cut. You. I like Thank it. I, appreciate I respect, that. The, respect list. the list. My number five is the, the hamburger. Oh. How could I forget this guy? This is uh, <laughs> exactly right. This is purely just because he has a funny little face. And look at his, he had one tooth. I always forget yeah, about one that. Tooth. He was my favorite toy that McDonald's offered. Back in the day, McDonald's right. and Happy Meals would put their like icons in bags. Hamburglar, I don't know why, I always just loved carrying him around. And I loved his funny little stripes. You carried him around? Yeah. Where? Everywhere. That's really sweet. Everyone had their action figures, and I was Emotional like, I got the fucking Hamburglar, baby. Hamburglar, yes. Didn't he always say, Robble, Robble? Was that him? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, like, Robble, Robble. Robble, Robble, Robble. Robble, 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 Robble. And I've also never seen him eat a hamburger on camera, which is, I'm curious what he's doing with these burgers. He's just the thrill of the chase. He doesn't like to eat. He's a vegetarian, actually. He's a funny guy. I like his mask. Didn't even realize he had a tie until now, and that's why we do this show. He dresses show. up. You know, he dresses up for the occasion. Why does he have a cape on? Who knows? Is he an escapee from jail, or does he just like dress like that for fun? I'm He's, not quite sure what the fuck is I going on. I think he goes to jail so often that he just wants to save time. Right, right. It's McDonald's land. You go to jail. You're getting now, you know? Right. This to me feels like corporate synergy at its worst, where they were trying to figure out what this guy's outfit would look like, and someone was like, he should wear a tie, and someone was like, he should have a Zorro mask on and a cape, and another person was like, what if he was a burglar? But you know what? Put it all on it one all, person. It all works. What if we removed all but one of his teeth? Yeah. <laughs> or is he a baby? <laughs> Maybe. I love my guy, number five, Hamburglar. I just thought I'd roll us in. Great this. guy, great guy. My number five, um, oh, you know, when we, Jesus. when we think about, Christ. this one's a little more, uh, I'm just speaking to the pure artistic beauty of it. I find it very captivating. 
The Morton Salt Girl. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Is yeah. that not just aesthetically stunning? Not sure why she has an umbrella. Well, that's part of it, isn't it? It's like... It's not sea salt. Where's she going? What's the story here? Look at the palette, the blues, the, that pop of yellow, the evolution of the logo over time. I don't know what her story is. I don't know what her deal is, why she's letting that salt fall behind her. As we all do, go on rainy walks with our Morton salt <laughs> <laughs> tucked under our underarm. The reason she needs an umbrella is it's a metaphor for how fast the salt comes out of a Morton salt container. That's true. It's like, it's gonna come out so fast, you're that gonna need be. an umbrella for Unlike all most salt dispensers that give you the courtesy of two different nozzles to put the salt out of, this one is just like a like a slide shoot. <laughs> that just yeah. like sh shoots well, out of it. It's a the fire hose. You get yeah. the little popcorn salt. They actually have the poked holes, and then on the other side, it's a full hole. Uh, yeah, but the big I'm only one has a giant. One. Yeah, it has the construction zone shoes. Don't, don't you just <laughs> fucking love a nice big cardboard tube of salt? Oh, I love nice it. With the it's little right. metal. It's anyway, it's kind of like when you're trying to get one ice cube out of a cup, and you're trying to slide, yeah. <laughs> slide it in <laughs> you your mouth. This and is that, one of the, you need an umbrella. Exactly. Exactly. This is one of the, exactly. 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 I like that theory. This is one of the few logos I've seen uh, people who have tattoos of because it's just such a. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. So number four, it's a classic. It's very exciting. Chester oh, Cheetah. Yeah, fucking he's got it. Guy. Yeah, he's a fucking cheetah and he has sunglasses. What's not to like? What does his voice sound like again? Could you do an impression? Isn't it kind of smooth? It's, it's it is. Does he, it's what, doesn't he have a phrase he says though? It's like dangerously cheesy. Yeah, he does say that. That, right? Okay, he does say that. You activated. You were like, does he have some sort of phrase? And then you became yeah, Chester yeah, Cheetah. Yeah, right. It was because of the sultry tones of your voice <laughs> right, that brought right, me right, back. Right. I had like a moment where I was like, oh my God, I just got activated like the Manchurian candidate. Right. He's not number one. No. But I do think there are some interesting things about Chester Cheetah that people don't know about. Tell me. He has a mixtape. Fuck yeah. This, I think, scans. Like, I'm yeah. not surprised by this. I am delighted to learn it. Though. Yeah, so I think at some point in early 2020, mascots and just general brands on the internet were looking for ways to go viral. Mm. And Chester Cheetah decided to start beefing with Doritos. I like that. I love that. Doritos does not have a mascot. I was just about to say, who's he beefing? <laughs> Which is beefing crazy. With? Yeah, I agree. And so he dropped something called Flamin' Hot Dish Track. <laughs> and he's just mad at Doritos, I think because maybe at the time they were launching some sort of flaming Hot can, competitor. Can we play the just seven seconds of that right now? Come on Doritos, you can't rep the flaming Hot name. Watch your step, I'm the OG in the snack game. You got celebs and a remix song, but like a bag of Cheetos, it won't last long. So next time you try to take what I got, remember, I'm flaming Hot and you're flaming Not. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. One thing I may also mention is I think the parent company is the same. Wow. <laughs> Doritos oh, and I love that. Yeah. Man, that's, that's corporate synergy. Because they can't just take the flaming Hot name. There, there are laws. If that's the case, he should just sort of like take over. They should be like, Chester the Cheetah bought Flamin' yeah. Hot Doritos. A storyline about how he becomes an enterprising capitalist and uh, exactly. rises through the ranks to purchase the rights to yeah. Doritos. I'd so. be curious how many more units Doritos would move once they started slapping Chester on. Put them on there. I bet yeah. you there'd be an uptick, at least a little bit. All right. All right, my number four is Mr. Mr. Peanut. Oh. Love Mr. him. Mr. Peanut. Uh, Look, everyone loves him, everyone knows him. He's got the monocle. I think he's got the best monocle game in the game. Sorry, Mr. Monopoly. But I think oh. Mr. Peanut actually has you beat. He just has a little more swag with it. And he has a cane too. He's got his little pimp cane. He's never standing up, right? little He's always cane. got a little lean to him. He almost made the list. He, another very elegant, like, you don't need to do much with him. That's a beautiful, beautiful rendering. I know, and he's got those, like, Fred Astaire tap shoes yeah. on. It's worth mentioning, he is a hero. He is dead, but he is a hero. He sacrificed himself to save Matt Walsh and uh, Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. <laughs> is that what happened? It happened during the Super Bowl. They were wow. hanging on a branch and there was too much to hold all three of them. And he said, fellas, it's okay. And he drops yeah, down. That's very down. sweet of him. And oh, you, that's why I didn't track all this because it was during the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's because yeah, that's, so that's a game where <laughs> yeah. two teams play football. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to your number four. My number four is Charlie the Tuna <laughs> from Starkist Tuna. Look at him kicking oh, back. I mean, <laughs> this guy is a pretty funny guy. 
looked like his hat. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like his it reminds him what his own yeah, name is. Yeah, I know. Is. I was just thinking that. <laughs> wow. just we all know we own a hat with our first name uh, plastered across it. I gotta say, Shane, he kind of looks like you if you were a tuna. Maybe that's why. Because the glasses and the hat. I could see you wearing a hat like that. You got a good hat game. Yeah. Thank you. I do like the style. Hat, glasses, nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. The other two big draws for me are one, uh, just a very funny bit. Charlie the Tuna is always trying to appeal to Starkist. Hey, Starkist, I'm putting my heart into it. And he talks like this. He's like, you got to try the tuna. Is, That's what he, he sounds like. Boy. He's, he's, he's talking commercials. all the time. Oh, wow. Now, no, just a little nitpick here. Yeah. Is there something troubling about the fact of no, a tuna? No, 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 we're no, going to get to of, it. Of a tuna Ryan, salesman Ryan, selling Ryan, tuna. That's it's the weird. whole appeal. Is Charlie it? is advocating for it's cannibalism. It's a little weird. Uh, well, I guess it's not cannibalism so much as like the genocide of his own species. Right. Charlie's saying, eat us, murder us, kill me, eat me, daddy. Anyway, what, love Charlie. What is this guy? Is he a whale? Well, I would say he's a tuna. He's a tuna, you dumb. He kind of looks Charlie like a whale, though. He looks like a whale, though, no? I mean, sure, it looks a little I bit would like think a whale. What tuna like a you blue, see that looks like that? Like a bluefin tuna is my guess. Is tunas the are, idea. Tunas are Just because he's blue. <laughs> you don't, do you even know what and, a bluefin tuna looks like? his name is like? Charlie the Tuna. <laughs> so that that okay, right. Oh, you're right. His name is Charlie the Tuna. Which could also be like a mobster name or something. Yeah, that's true. Well, let's move on to our number threes. All right, number three. Ah, yes, I remember. This is the one uh, that is a mystery for me. Oh, oh we are mystery boys. Jack oh, in the Jack in the Box, box guy? guy? <laughs> is, what is he? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if he's an upside down ice cream cone. That's what I would think. Or maybe an icy of some sort, but he's also got clown energy. And if he is ice cream or slushy or what have you, why doesn't he melt? That's a good question. I don't think he's ice cream. I'm gonna go out on a limb. Well, so, what that. could he possibly be? In a businessman! Oh, okay. oh, business Look man. at the suit! Okay, he's, he's definitely got a, a great man. body. Also, what does he have to do with the concept of Jack in the Box? What I love about him is the endless amount of questions I have as a result of seeing him. I've never even had the food. Wait You're telling me for the first time what it's like, and yet he doesn't leave my brain. Wait a minute. And did I? Just figure it out, sort of. Oh, like oh, the, when you do the like a jack in the box. Yeah, like a jack in the box. Like the little oh, clone that's what comes out of a jack in the box. Yes, that is what he. Yeah, is. but there's no box. He's out, baby. And why is he a businessman? But, but, <laughs> but his name is Jack in the box, but he's out of the box. Yeah, but like the face sort of looks like what you would expect right, to like pop when you out see of the of yeah the thing pop out. That's why true. has that never occurred to me? Because you weren't on Top 5 Beatdown. That's Fuck. right. And you were too busy eating two tacos for one dollar. I will say, I've had plenty of stuff at Jack in the Box that I do enjoy. Their tacos, I think, are ass. But, okay. you know, <laughs> but he's a great mascot, and I love his little face. All right, let's move on to my number three. My number three is... Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. Gotta love him. Most of what I'm gonna talk about here is this guy's backstory. Yeah. Does everybody know his backstory? I do. His parents were murdered in an alley. Like, for example, he was created by Nolan Bushnell in the 1980s, the creator of Atari. Oh, mm. shit. This is actually, Chuck okay. E. Cheese published a little <clears throat> book, like a storybook about yeah, yeah. how he grew up. According to the story, which can still be found online, Chuck E. Cheese grew up in an orphanage called St. Marinara's. Because he was an orphan, Chuck did not know his own birthday, but loved celebrating the birthdays of all the other orphans, especially loved singing happy birthday for them. One day when Chuck grew too old to stay at the orphanage, he moved to New York. There he was sad, lonely, and homeless. <laughs> this is real. This is coming from it's Chuck like E. Cheese. like the guy who voiced Peter Pan. Exactly. He decided to sleep in a pizzeria because he loved the music from the radio and the smell of pizza. So eventually he got caught by the pizza shop owner who tried to kill him. That's, by the way, that's fair. You find a rat in your pizza place, you kill oh, it. You yeah. don't kill the you rat. Kill you kill it. You usher it outside. <laughs> you kill the rat. But you know what saved him? His yeah. singing. The pizzeria, owner, the pizzeria owner thought that Chucky had a great voice and allowed him to sing at his pizzeria. What do you think he sang? Oh. Yeah. First night on stage, Chucky was too afraid to sing and got booed off stage. Second night, he saw a boy with the birthday crown and couldn't help but sing. Aww. Oh, because he originally was one of those animatronic singing guys. Yes. Yeah. And his legal name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. That's right. I wonder if they had Chucky and all the other animatronics sing and then they were like, we should cobble together some backstory or yeah. if the backstory was already there. The former is far more insane because they're like, we have this delightful singing Chuck E. Cheese mouse. Let's come up with a backstory that makes sense. How about he's an orphan who has no friends and almost died because he, he's a rat? He's spreading the joy for other children, you know? I think that's part of it too. He's sort of building upon his childhood trauma and making yeah. the world a better place. I'll give Isn't people the sweet? joy I can't have. That's sweet. Fair enough. Okay, on to my number three, which is 
The Kool-Aid oh. Mariners. Very nice. Very nice. Well I, done. I mean, what, what do you want from me? Look at him. Look at this big fucking guy. I'm sure he says other things, but he doesn't have to. No. He shows up, he says, oh yeah. Sometimes he wears clothes, but he usually doesn't. He's usually just bare ass. I didn't know I, he this is the first. This looks like fan art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. Like, like, yeah. I don't, it's not. Oh, I can okay. show you some yeah. real fan art that would really. <laughs> yeah, please I... don't. I mean, he's a mess. <laughs> he's, he's just constantly sloshing. Also, just the simplicity of it. Like, they beat everyone else to the punch. Hey, we need a mascot. What about a thing that comes into your home, just says, oh yeah! Crushes, That's it. Destroys your home. Oh yeah! I think it's a little deeper. It's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! I think that's pretty good. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Just a big, great guy. Big, great guy. One of the great big guys of this world. Does he ever run out of juice? No, he, that's the other thing. I think he's sort of, you know, he just keeps refilling. Is that what gives him his sentience, the juice? I think the juice give him the sentience, yeah. So like if he ever got down to here, <laughs> he that would be a really cool short story. He'd just be to like see him at this. He'd look like Jack Torrance at the end of The Shining. He'd I like, like that. So let's move on to our number twos. I'm just gonna rip the Band-Aid off. Rip it. You know him, you love him. It's Mr. Mr. Peanut. Oh yeah. yeah, Mr. Peanut, our yeah. guy. What can we say about Mr. Peanut that hasn't already been said? He died. He yeah. saved Matt Walsh and Wesley Snipes. Yeah. He did. He had a funeral, and guess who was there? It was like the whole gang, The right? whole gang was there, including the Kool-Aid man. He was oh! there. He was there. Was he wearing clothes? He, no. Nude Kool-Aid man was fully there, and you could see him to scale with human beings, which is great, because you could just see, huge? see how, how big he fucking is. fucking large he is and terrifying yeah. he'd be in real life. Yeah. I gotta say, for our list thus far, I'm very impressed with how few overlap there's been, and I think we may see it more toward the end here, just because we're getting down to it. Yeah, but it's a nice, It's a nice spread thus far. I like These it. These are great lists. All right, well, let's move on to my number two, and my number two is someone we've seen. The, the Kool-Aid Kool Man! Oh, <laughs> very I love good. this guy! He's, He's really funny! I love this Kool-Aid Man! We've already spoken about him at length. However, I, I mean, just look at his smiling face, Look at this fucking look at his guy! Face. It's a little disappointing that he couldn't kill himself to dress up for a funeral, but I'll look past that. That's why he's not <laughs> number one. When you said kill himself, I was like, what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit worse. It's actually how he's gonna die. He's gonna try and crash through one more living room wall, and he's just gonna shatter, and that'll be his last crash oh of all time. Oh my god. And they're just gonna see his eyes floating on the concrete. They it's had no be idea this. he was almost at his last crash. Well, he's perishable. He doesn't look structurally sound. No. Uh, and yet he is somehow. Very, and his ice so. cubes never melt. They never melt. How does that work? Let's move on to your number two. My number two. That's the Hamburglar. Oh, oh man! That's the Hamburglar. I would encourage everyone. He actually had. Yeah, oh, I want. Horrifying. <laughs> I want you guys heck? to go back and look up his original appearance because he like runs by and steals hamburgers, and Ronald McDonald bafflingly says, "That's the lone jogger." What? And they called him the Lone Jogger, you can Whoa. see there. That's the Lone Jogger. He likes McDonald's breakfast too. And look how scary he looks. He looks terrifying. <laughs> In the original commercial. That Horrifying. makes sense now why he has the cape. It's obviously a play on the Lone Ranger. Oh. And learning The so cape much. and the mask. The cape never made sense to me. You're a prisoner and they give you a cape. I'm pretty sure they don't allow you to wear a cape in prison. When I was a young tot, McDonald's cheeseburger Burgers were 30 cents each on Wednesdays. What a what life. The what a life. Yeah, this was in like the 90s, yeah, late 90s. Yeah. Sounds like you grew up in the 20s. <laughs> no, they were I grew that, up with the Lone Jogger. They were that cheap, bro. They, they were that cheap, yeah. That's crazy. Me and my mom would go and we would get a bunch of hamburgers. And if you bought enough, instead of giving you a paper bag, they would give you like a plastic sack. And so you would have a plastic sack of hamburgers. And I felt in that moment, it's like, the, like hamburger. the hamburger. Did you have a funny polka dot tie on? No. no. I think I was probably wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll also say this, love to the guy. He's a criminal, I respect that. Yeah. I, love, I think theft is some usually good. For McDonald's? Yeah, yeah, yeah for from McDonald's? a major corporation yeah. like McDonald's? Steal from McDonald's all you want. They don't even feel it. Just hop the counter and steal the food. As long as you're dressed like hamburger. Yes, <laughs> that should be a rule. If you show up to a McDonald's dressed like the hamburger, they should give you free food. <laughs> yeah, just like when you dress up in a Halloween costume on Halloween at Chipotle, they yes. give you a burrito. A burrito. I feel like we're starting to converge. Yes. Yeah, there yeah. is a convergence It's all happening. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if we're gonna get any repeats in the number one. Cause look, there's some beloved people in here. Some yeah. beloved, you know, the hamburger was almost my number one, but not quite. No, we've, yeah. we've all been doing a, uh, plenty of paddling here. It's just I, until now that we realized that we were all in the same canoe. I'll right. say that the, yeah. the overlap has been joyous. Yeah, it's and, exciting, and, unifying. And the disparities have been fascinating. 
All right, uh, All right. well, let's move on to our number one. Fellas, countrymen, mascots. Thank you. We've come to number one. Yeah, we have. And we spoke about whether or not we would converge, yeah. and I would like to confirm that yes, we will. My number one pick is... The it's Coons 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 Oh, I yeah! Love him. I love him! <laughs> <laughs> he's, so good. he's big, he's glassy! Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. He's him. great! If you think about how heavy glass is, yes, and also heavy. how heavy liquid is, yes, oh my very god, heavy. it really puts into perspective one, how much the Kool Aid guy weighs, which uh -huh. must be thousands of pounds. Oh, yes. I'm gonna stop you there. You said Kool Aid guy. Oh, I'm gonna, Sorry, man, it's, it's man, it's man. I'm, I'm throwing yeah, 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 around, yeah, yeah. man, been, no, it's boy, okay. God. You're in a one strike. Do you like that I said, oh yeah? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he weighs thousands of pounds. I'm pretty sure if you like did the math on that. He has really strong like center of mass, really yeah. good core control, mm -hmm. because he's able to move his body around with such agility. He's and got a great also, body. he's clearly, if any of these guys got into like a fight, he's number one. Oh, oh, in a, He yeah. would sit on Corn Boy. Corn, Corn Boy, it, it would evaporate. He'd be wedged yeah. in the Kool-Aid man's ass cheeks. We'd never see him again. Chester Cheetah would turn to Cheeto dust. Uh, yeah. I do think he's the most terrifying on the list, too. Like, yeah, if I, if these came to life, he would be the one I would not want to come to life. Jack in the Box is close, because he's got slender. Man, five, yeah. but just just below. But my, Mr. Scary. Peanut, because yeah. he can't die. I think this is actually ordered in my personal fear yeah. of mm. each of these mascots. I think Mr. Peanut would fucking rock Chester Cheetah. Oh, he would. Because he would. he'd get that cane going. Yeah, it, oh, the cane yeah. would turn into a fucking sword. Yeah. You know, like the penguin or something. Yeah. Okay, uh, but that's my list. Well, here's my number one. Beautiful, beautiful list. My number one. Oh boy. My number one is. Jack! Oh, and I oh, even drew. Guy. It doesn't look like him at all. I'm he not a good a artist. No, that's a really that looks good. Really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. I love him. I like that his voice has stayed consistent through all the years of advertising. Whoever what? that voice What's actor voice is, making like? bank. It's just a guy. It's just a guy. Oh. He's just like, hey, have you tried my tacos? <laughs> yeah. That's literally it. <laughs> Jack in the Box wasn't around much in Illinois when I was younger. Have the commercials been on your entire life? Has he yes, been they thing? have. I think he started popping up in commercials. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, internet, and I'm sure you will. The 90s. I think he brought he got brought the up 90s, in the 90s. Yeah. It, I like it. I like that he has funny suits. I like that he has a normal voice. Sounds like your neighbor, like the guy over the fence in Home Improvement. Does he have a family? Oh, I'm sure Jack has he's several families. He's oh, got, yeah. He's he got gets families all over the country. Yeah, look, oh, I'm seeing a picture God. of him in his... Oh, there's a baby Jack! Whoa, this is horrible. What's going on with that Pennywise punch in, Jack? Punch in on Grandpa Jack Yeah, there? what the fuck is going on with that Pennywise Jack? What's going Jack? on with his head? Whoa! What is that? That's like John Wayne Gacy in a box. I know. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy in the box. <laughs> Let's move on to your number one, Shane. Okay, my number one really took me by surprise. Okay. I didn't know that this was gonna be here today and that I was gonna be talking about this, but the more I thought about you it, you made the, more. the list. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> no, but you know, when I sit down, it's like the list makes itself through me. <laughs> right, you're you a don't passenger. Know. You don't read the script. Uh, my the script eyes roll back in my head and I just go. <laughs> right, right and I write the list. So my number one is Mr. Owl. Wow. Who the? Oh, the fuck this, is roll. The this guy, roll guy is yeah. such a piece of shit. Yeah. He cracks my shit up every single time because you got this dumb little boy walking through the woods, talking <laughs> to a bunch of animals, being like, hey, can you help me figure this out? How many licks does it take? And they're all like, I don't know. I'm not sure. That sounds like a really complicated question. <laughs> and one of them's like, you should talk to the owl. He's a really smart guy. Right. And then he goes up to the owl, this owl who's wearing a fucking graduation cap. I was cap. about to say, is he, is he a keynote speaker? I don't know. Is that yeah, what's he, going on? He just takes three licks, bites it, and then confidently says, it takes three licks. So he's given the boy wrong information. And he's just eating lollipops. And he's also stolen the boy's candy. He stole the boy's candy. Yeah. I, like I love him. this guy. He's an absolute nasty little fella. Look, look at him. Look at his yeah. little face. He's I, number two in my owl rankings in cartoons. Who's your number one? My oh, number oh, one is Winnie oh, the Winnie Pooh's the owl. Pooh. There's Winnie only the two Pooh. owls, but I mean, he's number two, unfortunately. What about all the owls in the Owls of Gahool? There's a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> mm, it's a Zack Snyder produced film about several owls who get high when they look at the moon. Actually, that does sound quite good. Yeah, it's pretty good. We gotta get high as hell. I'll have to check that, that out. Yeah. Let's take a look at all three of our lists. Like you were saying earlier, there's a lot of synergy yeah, here. Yeah, there's some synergy. Mr. Owl is a really great choice from out of left field. I'm, He's a fun guy. Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm the only one who had Chuck E. Cheese on here. That's interesting. He was, look, look, he was up here. He was in the conversation yeah. in my brain. Yeah. That takes is there place any, every were day. there any near misses other than Chuck E. Cheese? For Mr. You? Peanut was very, very close for me. For me, Nesquik Bunny. 
Love that oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, damn. That almost I made honestly, it. he didn't make it because I think a lot of mine were character based. Right. He just doesn't have enough going on. I feel like I just want to hang out with him. I just re I really liked Quick when I was growing up. Right. Yeah. And I just love drinking chocolate milk with the boys, and it seems like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. that's See what he was all about. I think this is maybe our most joyous episode we've ever had, and it's been such a fun day here. And yeah, and this was I, a delight. I want to thank you guys for for allowing me to to talk about this stuff with you, and I, I respect the list. A married man, his his vibes are are much different. He's much more <laughs> amicable, and frankly, it's just a better dude. It's about compromise, communication. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's not often that you find harmony in, in the beat zone. Yeah, I was expecting a fight. There's a boxing glove and That's the correct. logo. Yeah. I came here ready to, I don't know, get down and dirty. You but... know what I think it might be? The mascots who we all love, who have risen to the top, they're there for a reason. Right. They're loved. When I look at your lists, I don't see people who I'm like, I hate that. I hate Chester Cheetah. Right. I love the guy. Yeah. He's like an uncle to me. Right. S speaking True. of rising through the list, I think it's really funny that Kool Aid Man slowly, just surely made his way all the yeah, way up he's to a number climber. one. He climbed up, and I think that, that once again speaks testament. to his power. Yeah. I think we're all the people's lister today. I, I really do. I do. I, mean, I don't think there's a bad list on the board today, and I, I haven't been able to say that because usually there usually is one. Um, but, you know, today, all, all smiles. Jarvis, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. our on. most joyous episode ever. Thank you for joining us in the Beat Zone. Before you do exit the Beat Zone, is there something that you'd like to plug? Uh, well, I do have a podcast called Sad Boys, which is a podcast about feelings and other things also. And uh, I have a YouTube video, so you can watch those also. So. Nice, nice. And you'll get the, the description for both of those things. Now. Yeah. That does it for this episode of Top 5 Beatdown. Make sure you guys chime off in the comments and let us know uh, which list you agreed with the most, though. They're all fucking great <laughs> this time. Uh, choices you agreed with, choices you did not agree with. And until then, that's, that's the list! Almost a guru like quality. Jeff Bridges vibes almost. Oh, yeah. yeah. If Jeff Bridges was a Cheeto loving cheetah, they, they'd get along. He would look just like this guy. Absolutely.